turn. Cool. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Tuesday morning. It's it's a cold morning here in Colorado. Sean, you got snow up there in the mountains? No, no, no. 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 Come on down here. We have plenty. Be happy to yeah. share. It's coming in from what they say. So coming in from the north a little bit, we're not supposed to get much. But anyway, it's good to see everybody, guys. Thank you very much for jumping in. If you're a guest with us, um, definitely want to welcome you. I know we're going to have some guests on here, people from other companies outside of EXP. This is not an EXP event at all. We do this every Tuesday, and you're always welcome to come to this, okay? Um, It's the same Zoom link every week. Um, The first Tuesday of every month, we just do kind of an open mastermind where it's just a Free for all people throwing out ideas, questions, thoughts, you know, last week we talked about rates and we actually talked a little bit about what we're going to be talking about today. Um, so this is actually kind of a good follow up. Um, yeah. We had something else scheduled and needed to, to change that schedule yesterday and Andy jumped in saving the day for us. So Yay. Andy House, I'm not going to I don't want to steal your thunder. Andy. I'm going to let you tell your story because you got a great story as far as just even how you came into this. I don't want to tell that because uh, I want you to share it. Kathy, myself. Uh, Tim, there was a group of us in Dallas here just a couple of weeks ago, and um, you know Andy was down there and just sitting there at dinner this one night and hearing Andy talk about what he's been able to do with YouTube. Um, really, in the last year and a few months, um, I was blown away. I'm like, oh my goodness! Like this is probably a four part series <laughs> for this Tuesday morning group. But um, I mean, yeah, what what he's been able to accomplish is is really remarkable, and it's something that really any of us can do. Um, you know, it's, it's inspiring to hear it. So Andy, why don't you jump in? Thank you again for, for, uh, you know, for filling in for us here, whatever. I know this is going to be awesome, but just tell the story of, of how, you know, your, your background, the, the car background coming into this and really where you were at a year and a half ago, ready to leave the business. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. No problem. Yeah. I, uh, I actually could probably do a, a, a three day event, just all <laughs> the story, you know, on the story itself. But, um, but yeah, so I was in the car business for 30 plus years, uh, manager, you know, I've done every job you could do in the car business, you know, from cleaning up cars all the way up to a uh, general manager. So, um, but I decided to get out. Um, she said my sound was kind of muffled. Can everybody hear me okay? It's a little muffled, but I, we can hear you. I yeah, mean, we can I, understand you. Guys. Yeah, we We're can good. hear you. It's You're a good. little, yeah. Okay. All right. So anyway, I decided um, to, you know, move to the beach, which is what I had always wanted to do. And then I, so I sold everything I had, moved to the beach and got into real estate because of Aileen Fountain. Um, Aileen is, we've been friends forever and a day, but so, uh, you know, and then I got on that whole hamster wheel that everybody gets on, you know, where I was buying realtor.com leads, you know, Zillow leads, truly, uh, you know, the whole nine yards because I didn't know how else to build a business. Aileen was trying to help me as much as she could, Um, but, you know, she was also trying to build her business, so, um, but anyway, I was on that hamster wheel of just buying leads, buying leads, buying leads, and and it's a different, it's a different feel than it is when somebody comes onto a car lot. I'm used to that instant gratification, you know, where somebody comes on the car lot, they're ready to buy a car, uh, they buy a car, they're down the road, it's done. With real estate, you know, especially if you get that lead off of realtor.com or Zillow or however you get them, you got to chase them, you know. So I was like, well, maybe real estate just isn't for me. So I battled with this for probably six months to a year, trying to think of whether I should get back in the car business or whether I should should try to stick it out with real estate. And so anyway, Elaine and I had many, many discussions about it, and she knew I was on the verge of quitting. I mean, I was literally on the verge of quitting in August of 2022. Well, September of 2022, I had told my wife, I said, look, I think I'm done with this. I think I'm just going to go back in the car business. And, you know, car business takes up so much of your time. I knew it, it, it's really hard to be married and be in the car business. I mean, it it truly is hard to, to do to do both. So she didn't really want me to do it. So um, we're a spiritual family. So she told me, she said, you know, you, you need to pray over this and you need to let God tell you what to do. So I was like, all right. So, you know, I talked to Aileen about it. Aileen said, listen, if you will just do me a, a favor and get plugged in, plugged into every training you could possibly get plugged into, here's where you need to go. She was really guiding me as a mentor, just telling me, here's, here, go here, go here, go here, do this, do this, do this. 
and I was having to check in with her daily. So it was like, you know, make sure she made sure that I was doing what I told her I was going to do. She said, if you will do this, she said, there is an event in da in Dallas in August and it's a, a big training event. And she said, and I will pay for your way to go. Cause it was, you know, for me at the time, it was a little pricey simply because I didn't have any money. <laughs> so um, anyway, so I told her, I said, all right, well, I, I plugged in. I did exactly what she told me to do. And true to her word, she paid for my way. So the first day of the event, it was just the same old, same old thing. You know, everybody was like, uh, you know, you got to pick up the phone. You got to call 100 people a day. You know, you got to buy leads. You got to pay for these ads and pay for this ad. And, and that kind of stuff works. I mean, listen, anything works if you do it and stick to it. But, um, you know, it just wasn't for me. And so the second day, I, I actually, that night, I called my wife and I said, I don't even think I'm going to the second day of the event. I said, because I'm getting nothing out of this. I said, I'm I'm truly just going to come back home and get in the car business. So she said, okay, I'll support you, whatever you want to do. So um, Aileen called me that morning. The next morning, she said, are you coming down to the event? And I said, no, I don't think I am. <clears throat> and she said, no, you need to come down for the nine o'clock um, deal. There's one guy I want you to see. So I went down there and saw this guy talking about YouTube. He was just, you know, saying how great it was and the numbers. You don't have to chase the people and that they're, they, the leads come in organically. And so, I, I mean, it just resonated. It just hit me. And I was like, oh, my gosh, this is what I'm going to do. And Aileen said, no, this is what we're going to do. And this is the reason I brought you. <laughs> she said, so I paid for this so that you could learn how to do it because I don't really have time to do it. So, and then the rest is history. You know, we've just been um, put it to the grind. Uh, we've been at this a little over a year now. Um, and and I'm not going to lie to you, it's not, it's not a sprint. It's a marathon, you know, so it didn't happen overnight. It took us, uh, we started doing about three to four videos a week. Um, you know, I, I went through a course online and learned exactly how to set up the videos, how to do the videos what order to shoot them in, how to set up all the SEOs, how to do the thumbnails, how to do everything in the back end, even video editing, which is a nightmare if you don't, you know, if you're not a tech head, which I am. <laughs> so, but I learned it all and I wanted to learn every little piece of it. And so since then, it's just been, you know, it it really took a while to get the ball rolling, but now that the ball has started rolling, it it it's rolling downhill fast. So we've had to buy hire two new buyers agents, a transaction coordinator. I mean, things are just they're going so fast now; it's hard to keep up with. So, but that that's pretty much it. The power of YouTube. I mean, it uh, it works. If if you work, it works. <laughs> How long did it take you, Andy? The the first, you know, when you really started, like you know, your first couple calls that that really came in, like, hey, I want to, I want to talk to you about this. You know, how long well, did that it, take? It took about four months before we got the first phone call, and the first okay. phone call was one of these where you know, hey, I'm thinking of retiring in three years, and I want to move down there at that time. You know, that that kind of thing. So I was like, oh my gosh, I hope this isn't the way every phone call turns out, but. But it didn't. So about a, maybe two weeks later, we got another phone call of a lady who said, I've, I've seen, all, you know, the, and these calls are so warm and friendly. It's not like picking up the phone, calling a, a, a realtor.com lead, because when you pick up the phone and call them, half the time they didn't even mean to hit the button. The other time, you know, they'll, you give them all the information that they want. You know, you go through and, and give them tons of information. And then they tell you two weeks later, they say, oh, yeah, well, my brother's cousin's uncle is a realtor down there where you live, and we're going to use them. But thank you for all your information. You know, so, but the YouTube leads are different because when they pick up the phone and call you, they've already watched their videos. They feel like they know you, they trust you, and they literally, I mean, like every phone call I get, it's amazing because they go, is this a YouTube guy? And I'm like, yeah. And they go, I can't believe you answered the phone. Well, who else would answer the phone? But, you know, but they, they treat you like a celebrity and it's, they're ready to buy. I mean, they are literally ready to buy. So our conversion rate on these at, at this point right now, it's probably 
upwards of 60%. So everybody we talk to, we're, we're converting them into actual customers. Now, I'm not telling you they're going to close next week, but we do have a, a lot of them that we are in the process of getting um, pre-approved. And then, but, but most of these come with pre-approvals or cash in hand, you know, they're just, they're ready to go. So it took us probably about seven months before we got our first closing when we launched the channel. And since then we did, I think in the first year, um, we did a right at $5 million in sales in the first year, you know, which is not a lot, but um, here it is at uh, January. I think we have $3 million set to close in January and another $2 million set to close in February, you know, so, and that's, that's all under contract and already done. And then we, Aileen's actually, the reason she's probably not on this call is because she's showing property today to another YouTube client this morning. So, you know, it's, it, they're just, they're coming in steady and hot and heavy. <laughs> when they're coming. Yeah, the one thing, Nandy, that I, I want to make sure everybody heard is it was four months before you got your first call. It was seven months before you closed your first deal. Yes. And so, if you learn nothing else today, it's, you know, it's, it's, you got to be consistent because so many people want to give up, you know, and there's been many a times in my career that I've tried something and I've not given it four months and I'm like, oh, that doesn't work. That was a waste of money, you know, whatever, but it's the power of the consistency, you know, and your story is a, a perfect example of that. Well, and believe me, I wanted to give up several times because, <laughs> you know, I mean, we we would go weeks without the phone ringing and I'm like, what am I doing wrong? And I'm and I'm one of these guys that will, you know, I'll dive into the back end of it and I'll really just start to dig and dig and dig and, you know, analyze every single video. And, and I'm just overthinking it. You know, the like you said, the the key is consistency. If you will just continue to, if you're going to do two videos a week, then do two videos a week, but do them, you know, make sure that they launch at the same time every day and then tell your people on your channel that that's what you're going to do. You know, we're going to load new videos every Tuesday at 4 p.m. and every Thursday at 4 p.m. And then they're looking for it. You know, they're looking for those videos. But if you're going to tell them you're going to do it, you better do it. You know, because I'm telling you, they're not loyal. <laughs> they will absolutely find a different realtor if you're not pit, you know sticking to what you said you were going to do that's good well and it's funny because i remember when we were in dallas down there and you, you you had mentioned like i think you'd had a call either that day or the day before like somebody that came in from your youtube channel you know i feel like we could be drinking buddies oh yeah, <laughs> so, without a doubt. <laughs> yeah like they know you like you said they feel like they know you you know and they're just and he was like oh what he was over a million dollar buyer it was like it was a cash buyer you said yeah, we um, just put him under contract yesterday. So, That's yeah. Awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. So go back a little bit. You know, obviously for, you know, because a lot of people on here, everybody's, you know, we're all different levels. Some of us have never done a video. Some of us have a YouTube channel. Maybe it's not optimized the way we want it to be. We're growing it. We're all different stages here. Go back to like when you started, you know, let, let's let's walk through that process. What kind of videos to shoot? Two or three videos a week. I don't even know what to shoot. How do I shoot it? Do I need to get all this equipment? Like just start talking through some of the process of what you went through with that. Okay. Yeah. And I would say it depends on where you live, you know, cause I'm in a vacation spot, you know, so yeah. most of the owners here or the, or the buyers here do not actually live here, you know, so <clears throat> they live in like Michigan or Ohio or somewhere like that. And then they, uh, they actually don't live here full time, you know, so, um, we started just, we came up with a theme, you know, basically, and we thought, what would somebody want to know if they were going to move here? So the whole key was, you got to quit thinking like a realtor, wow. you know, because that was one of the things I had to almost beat out of Aileen, was that when she went to go do a video, she wanted to sell that house, because it might be her listing. So she wanted to sell that property. Well, that's what they do on Realtor.com and Zillow. You can see the pictures of the house. You can see the description. You can see when it was built. You can see all that stuff. But what you can't see is you can't see the neighbor's house. You can't see what's at the end of the street. You can't see how far it is to the, in our case, how far it is of a drive to the beach, how far it is to the grocery store, how far it is to the movie theater. That's the kind of thing people want to know. 
you know, so that's, that's what we did was we started doing, you know, what they call vlog tours, you know, where we just went around and showed the neighborhood, um, got a good amount of B-roll um, so that we could show people, you know, like, listen, it's, you know, and we, we would actually do videos where when we were going to showcase a property, it, whether it be our listing or somebody else's listing, it didn't matter. But you got to make that content evergreen. So you don't want to say, come by this house at 123 Main Street, because in two weeks, that house at 123 Main Street is not going to be on the market. So you want to say, here's what it's like to live in this community. This house is in this community, and here's what it's like to live here. So that's the first videos we started doing. And then plus, you want to make you want to mix in like fun videos so that people can see what it's like to actually live there. So when we would go to a uh, a restaurant, we would film the restaurant, you know, so we'd just kind of do a, like a little walk to the restaurant and tell, you know, what's the favorite things on the menu to us. Um, we did, you know, like with us here, we did top 10 um, seafood restaurants, where to get the best seafood, where to get the best bushwhackers, you know, where to get the best. Um, and Bushwhacker is just an adult um, chocolate ice cream, basically, if you don't know what one is. But um, <laughs> and then where to get the best cheeseburger, where to get the best pizza, you know, because we also got to think, well, if families are coming here to the beach and then you're going to stay here for, say, a week or two on vacation, you'll get tired of seafood. You know, so, I mean, there may be days when you just want to order a pizza. So we started telling people, well, here's where you get the best pizza, you know, so here's, and that's the kind of stuff we were doing. Well, it keeps your people engaged, you know, and once you get the engagement and, and when you first start doing videos, you have to basically, you, you have to uh, conform to YouTube's algorithm until you build an audience. So the reason I say that is because it, it doesn't take a big amount of subscribers in order for you to start selling houses on YouTube. It just doesn't. I mean, we sold our first house with less than probably 200 subscribers. You know, so, I mean, it was it, the phone was still ringing. Now we have almost 1,400 subscribers and we've built an audience. So now I've, I've started using things like the community tab that's on, on uh, YouTube. And I'll ask the question. You know, would you know? Uh, would you rather see videos on new construction homes or resale or condos over four hundred fifty grand or houses under three hundred grand? You know, and I'll ask that question and do a poll, and then my my audience will tell me what to film next. You know, so that's that's the way we kind of utilize the community tab. So to start with, you have to basically conform to YouTube's algorithm, and what that means is you want to do a search and um, you know my suggestion like we did to start with we just purchased two a thing called tube buddy t-u-b-e buddy and it and we got a legend license on tube buddy and it will show you how something scores on the internet like what you know you, youtube is a search engine that is owned by google so people go in here and they don't that they might say you know what can I buy for 450 grand in Orange Beach, Alabama? Well, that's the video we need to do. And you need to title that video, video the, that particular search word, you know, term. What, what you can buy for 450 grand in Orange Beach, Alabama. And then that video, it shows up in all the searches. So Excuse that, that me, was Mr. the whole Hollis. strategy behind it to start with. Excuse me. No. Oh, mm -hmm. I think I just. Do you have a question, here. Joseph? <laughs> You're muted, Joseph. There I think go. I just yeah. muted him. I yeah. thought he was talking in the background to somebody else. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to find out from you um, when you started making videos and you make your first sale, how did the people contact you? Did they call your phone number or did they send you a message on Facebook, on, on YouTube or what? how did that happen? Well, with us, the majority of it has been phone calls. So, you know, we put our phone number. I, I I created a Google phone number because I didn't want to put my personal cell phone out there. Plus, you can actually uh, Google filters out spam for you. So if somebody's calling to sell you something, a lot of times you won't get those calls, um, which is the whole reason I went through the Google phone. But with uh, with us, it's the majority of the time it is a phone call. 
and and those phone calls are remarkable because I'm telling you, it's you know no lie. That's what they do. They go, is this the YouTube guy? And then <laughs> then the the rest is kind of history because they already know your personality. You know, so that's the other one of the other uh, tips that I can say about. Um, doing a video is I was scared to death to be on camera to start with and and Aileen as well you know so some of our early videos are horrible I mean they're terrible you know because it looks like we're robots and we're reading off of a screen where we're going you know uh, so you're thinking about buying in Orange Beach Alabama well this is the channel for you well then you know then we finally decided you know listen you just got to talk to the camera like it's another person that All may be things. why it took you four months to get your first call. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, from everything I've said, the community that I'm involved with as far as this YouTube, that's pretty typical. Um, there are some channels that are in smaller markets that we've seen that has they've been in operation for a year and haven't gotten their first phone call. But now I think they're only doing one video a month or maybe two videos a month or something like that. But so the more content you put out and the more consistent you, that you are with that content and you keep to the same theme. And what I mean by that is you're here showing people what it's like to actually live in whatever area that you're in. So don't do a cooking video and put it in there. They don't they're not they didn't come to your channel to learn how to cook whatever it is. They came to your channel to find out what it's like to live in that area because they're thinking about moving there. So that's what you need to stay with is in within that theme. Is everything you do, you need to think about what would somebody who wants to live here, what would they want to see? What would they want to know? So that's what we, you know, do our videos on and it's been successful so far. Andy, can I can I ask you a question? Can you back all the way up to the very beginning? Because there's people on here, like Jeff said, at all different levels. I would say most of whom are not doing YouTube. So what equipment do you use? I, you, you just your phone? Do you have a microphone, right? You know, what microphone, if you know which one that is, probably people be interested to know that. You know, I remember when we were together, you said you can have bad video, but you better not have bad audio. You yeah. know, and that is what's so important on YouTube. And so maybe if you'll go all the way back to the basics for somebody who's just getting ready mm -hmm. to start, what equipment are you using? Yeah, I learned that the hard way. Um, you know, like I said, bad video people will still watch, but bad audio they will not watch. Um, I we shoot all our videos on an iPhone. Um, I have an iPhone 12, I think is what it is that I shoot on, and Aileen has an iPhone 15. So um the the other thing is too, I did go out and buy that's the one expensive thing I bought was a microphone. And I bought a um it's um oh gosh. I'd have to look it up on Amazon, but it starts with an S. It's a Shiruzi or something like that. I, I think is what it is. But it's a it's a high dollar microphone. And if I knew that my voice was muffled on this stupid camera that I have, I would have plugged that microphone in today. But um, but it it you can add echo in. You can cut echo out. It has a reverb thing on it. So I mean, there's all these different settings on it. But my suggestion would be just to do you know just start doing videos and then watch them back yourself. Um, you know, on your phone or something to see how they sound, get the sound perfect. And then the rest of it is fine. I mean, you know, because like I said, we shoot everything on an iPhone and it, you know, I I do have some other cameras that I purchased, but I honestly still go back to my iPhone because it's just so easy. And, you know, you just put that thing on a tripod. And and the other trick to um, to the videos is is you want to always have your face in the videos you it always wants to be pointed at you you know so don't you know don't just do a video of a walkthrough of a house and then there's nothing there's nothing with you involved in it you you've got to be involved so even if you're having somebody else video and you're just walking through the house to show people then um you know, that that is the, the perfect way to do it, but we haven't gotten there yet. You know, I haven't gotten to the point where I'm ready to hire an editor or I'm ready to hire uh, a videographer. We're going to get there, but we're just not there yet. So, but yeah, you're right. I mean, I, I would just shoot it on, it, it don't take, a, I, I thought it was going to take a lot of money to get it started, but it doesn't. 
Yeah, so how much was the microphone in? Did you remember just off the top of your head? I want to say that microphone was two, a little over two hundred dollars. Okay, it's, so it's a, so not so not out of reach for people, you know, by yeah. any means. Okay, and I bought some other little microphones. Like I bought some uh, little lapel microphones, um, mm -hmm. and they have like a a noise guard down. Those things were twenty nine bucks, but they work perfect, you know. So, right. um, that that's the biggest thing is. You don't want to have, uh, you know, like Aileen, and to start with, she was just filming with no microphone and just her phone. Well, you hear, you hear everything. That iPhone will pick up everything, you know. So you want to have the microphone as close to your mouth as you can get it and then have a little noise reduction on it, you know, so you don't have the wind noise and all that other stuff. And, yeah, and Tim just put a note in there that that's, True. Put that phone on airplane mode because when you start to film, uh -huh. if you don't, somebody's going to text you, somebody's going to call yeah. you, you know, so it's going <laughs> to, yeah. it's going to mess up your whole train of thought. It'll mess up your whole video. Um, so but, show them again. Again, I think we have, um, I would say mostly beginners here. So yeah. when you video, you hold in your phone like this, right? Not like that. No, I always do. Always. Um, vertical oh. shot and I always okay. do it with the outer lens towards me you know not you don't want to do the uh the lens fake you want to you want to do it like you were taking a picture if you were looking out so the the back side of the camera you want to point it towards you and I always set it on the 0.5 setting so it's the widest lens so it picks up everything around you because you want to show them all the stuff that's behind you you know if you're walking through a neighborhood you know, we're doing new construction videos now, and, and I wanted to show people what it's like in there right now, that it's noisy, you know, that I wanted them to know, you know, so that if that's not, if that's not something that interests them, then they need to be, you know, moving on. And no, you, and somebody put, so you can't see yourself while you're recording. No, you cannot. Um, but I mean, You'll know. I mean, that when you have that camera out, you'll learn. If, if you just practice and do a couple, you'll learn exactly where to hold that camera to position it. So after you do a couple of them, it uh, it will absolutely it'll become second nature. <laughs> for sure. So and again, so for said, go ahead. Tim, I'm sorry. I was gonna say Tim said for shorts less than sixty seconds, you do vertical camera. And well, if, I don't, I don't do that. Let me, and the reason why I don't okay. do that is because I take my long form videos and I use a, uh, a program called opus.pro and it's opus.pro. And I'll take that video and put it in there and let it cut it up into, into shorts for me. I don't ever do shorts. I, yeah. I just, I, everything I film is vertical and I'm always filming long form content. I let the AI product cut up all my shorts um, yeah. and then put them on there. And, you know, there's there's certain argument people say don't do shorts, that shorts can hurt your channel. Um, but and you never know with those shorts how they're going to hit, you know, what what's going to take off. I did one. You know, we had a short last night that is literally about a breakfast place that is right down the road. It's a 42 second video and it had two thousand four hundred views overnight. Mm -hmm. And I don't ha I have no idea why. <laughs> I mean, I just, I don't know why, but you know, sometimes they take off. Then sometimes you might put one out there that only has, it never gets but four views. Um, and then we also, if, if a video doesn't start getting views, I, I wouldn't take too much concern with it because, you know, we, we've had some videos where we put them out and they don't have but 200 views in seven months or eight months. And then all of a sudden, YouTube sees something that people like and they start putting it out in front of people. And then now that same video has just in the last two months has gotten like 4,700 views just in two months. So you yeah. just don't ever know what's going to resonate with, with YouTube. So that's why I said I wouldn't overthink it. I would just simply set it up the right way to start with and then just be consistent and <clears throat> make sure if you're going to do two videos a week, make sure you do two videos a week. Put them out the same day at the same time every single week. Right. So people get used to watching it, kind of like a TV show. A lot of the short videos, I mean, they'll they'll lead people back to your page. I've had several people do that, you know, with shorts that I put out. And all of a sudden, next thing you know, they're subscribing on my channel. 
and now they're watching my long videos. You know what I mean? So right. it's almost like, like little mini things. But again, somebody asked opus.pro. That's yeah. the AI website that you can take a long video, put it in there. I've yeah. done it. It takes, you know, I don't know, you put it in there and you get three minutes later, you get an email and, you know, here's your 10 shorts that have been cut out of that video. I mean, and, you know, some are usable, some aren't, you know, whatever you got to play with it a little bit, tweak it, but it's a great platform to just make those shorts and keep it simple. They, they look yeah, great. Yeah. I mean, they put the captions on there. They do all kinds of stuff, but it's all automated. So kind of nice. So real quick, Andy, go back to like, again, for somebody brand new, the, the first video that you, you would recommend going in starting to do like some, some home tours, you know, but again, like around, like do the home tour, but then go outside. Here's the up and down the street and kind of the neighborhood thing, something that it would be an evergreen video that would just, that could sit there the whole time. Would you do that? Like, say you're on a showing, would you, would you show a house that's, do you just do your listings or would you do other people's listings? Or what, no, I do other people's it? listings. Like if I'm selling property, if I'm say that I have, you know, two or three condos that I'm going to go show that's on the beach, I might show up to those condos 30 minutes early and then go ahead and I, I'd go ahead and do the video because now after, you know, we have 260 videos on our channel. So after this amount of time, I've learned because I edit them too. So I've actually learned the sequence in how to video. So I actually go do the home tour first. I go in and, and do a, a tour of the condo or a house or whatever it is. And then I come back out and do my intro and my and my exit. So the whole thing is there's, there's a process to it. You want to have a call to action at the first of the video and a call to action at the end of the video. So basically, you're asking people to call you, you know, so, you know, we always say if this is your first time to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button, that like button and ring that little bell so you can be the first one to learn everything there is to learn about what it's like to actually live at the beach. And then we go, you know, the beach life. And then so we do that at the first of the video and at the end of the video so that people, it, no matter where they watch it, because you, you never know when they're going to cut it off or if they, they may start in the middle, you know, because if you put chapters on your video, like TubeBuddy suggests, well, then all those chapters become searchable too. And so they may not want to see all the fluff that comes with it. They may just want to see the tour of the house. So they'll watch that part of it and then that's it. That's all they watch. Um, so we try to make sure we put a call to action at the first of it and the beginning and then you also don't want to have too much fluff in the beginning of your video. You don't want to have, you know, where you're sitting and ex explaining for 20 minutes what you're going to film about because they're gone. Their attention span is basically under three seconds. So if you don't catch their attention right off the bat, then they're history. You know, so we get right into it. You know, we, we act, like if, if I'm going to film a condo that's uh, 450 grand and, uh, and I really like the, the little neighborhood that it's in, then that's what I'll tell them in the first of the video. I'll say, you know, uh, and then I usually start them off the same way every single time. So you're thinking about buying or selling a, a home in, in Orange Beach, Alabama, or wherever I'm filming at, whether it be Gulf Shores, Orange Beach, Foley. And then I'll tell them what we're going to film today. And I say, and we're going to get to it right now. And then I have like a little six second clip in there that I use the same in every video. And it tells people um, who we are. You know, so it says, you know, that I'm Andy Hollis, a realtor. And then this is Aileen Fountain, a realtor. And then, and then we go on from there. And that's the only time we ever mention that. Um, you know, so we don't harp on the fact that, you know, give us a call. We want to sell you a house, you know. We just make it like our channel is just informative. We do these videos each and every week just to show you what it's like to live at the beach. And, and that's what we kind of stick with. And then that resonates with people because they think, well, they're not trying to sell us anything. They're just here to give us information. So and then they stick around and watch the channel. Um, and I, I did throw some numbers together just so you can know exactly like where we are and why YouTube is so important. Because as of yesterday, and I pulled these numbers off yesterday, we have 141,485 views on our channel. Now, if you, and, and we have a four minute and 46 second view duration. So if you multiply that by the view duration, that means our channel is being watched 631,023 minutes divided by 60 minutes in an hour. That comes to 10,517 hours. 
divided by a 40 hour work week. That gives you 263 weeks divided by 52. That means that our channel in one year has worked for us 5.05 years. If, if you were to pick up the phone and dial, talk to a customer for five minutes, this is eight hours a day, five days a week, hang up the phone, call another one, five minutes, hang up, call another one, five minutes. That's what you're getting out of it. So that's why I think YouTube's so important is because it does, it sits there and generates leads for you 24 hours, seven days a week. You're in front of people. You don't never know when they're going to be watching the channel, you know, so. Well, and that to me is a great point because mm -hmm. when you think about all the other social media platforms, they don't have the, they don't have the life, the evergreen, like you, or the lifelong, um, uh, stay that YouTube does. How many of us ever go to YouTube to search for anything and we watch a video that's two years old versus right. how many times do you go to Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, and look back at something that's two years old? Never, ever. Yeah. And so, you know, YouTube is not only is it a powerful search engine, it has that longevity stay that all the other social media channels don't have. Yeah, for sure. And like you said, it's a search engine, you know, so people go in there and type in a question as far as what they're looking for. Well, you can't really do that on Facebook, you know, and like, and just like you said, if you put something on Facebook, you put a video on Facebook, it might be relevant for the next three or four days, but then it's gone. Oh, you know, they, right. I mean, it's, 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 it's history. Buried. Yeah. yeah, it gets buried. <laughs> So, Jeff, do you, know, you want to open it up for questions um, to see? Yeah, we can. One, one, one quick, definitely one quick comment too, Andy. I think this, and you had mentioned this, and I think this is one of the powerful things with this. Like, if you decided, you know what, I'm done with, I'm done with Orange Beach. I'm gonna go move to, you know, I don't know wherever. I'm gonna go to move somewhere in Montana. Yeah. You could go up there and duplicate what you just did anywhere. You yeah, could start a channel, set up some home showings, go look at some homes. You know, now you had mentioned too, like you know, if you're showing a home, you you always go back to that realtor who had the listing. Hey, you know, just I, I I did a video tour of your house. Would you mind if I, you know, I give you credit for it? Is that right? Yeah, you know, I give you yeah. credit. And and there's Talk different laws in different states, but okay. yeah, in Alabama we have to have the permission of, and we have to actually mention the other realtor. So sure. in the video, we always say this. You know, we're going to show you a condo today at 123 Main Street, and it comes courtesy of blah, blah, blah with Remax, you know, whatever. We sure. never give their contact information. We just give their name and who they're working with. So that, that's to cover us legally. Um, and the other so realtors that, find that you're doing this. I mean, oh, it's, it's you've never, you said you've never had one that said, no, don't, don't post that video. <laughs> I've only ever had one, and I won't mention his name, but he, okay. <laughs> but, but he, he owns his own videographer, and so he basically okay. wanted me to use his videos. And and I'll gotcha. take a short conversation. He said, "Well, you could just use my videos. I mean, if you, I don't mind you advertising my condo, but you can use my videos." And I said, "Well, your videos suck. I mean, I I, I don't <laughs> want to use your video. I'm sorry. Your videographer is horrible, and I'm I'm sorry. You yeah. know, so." <laughs> I mean, because that's all it was, was just a tour with no face in it, no nothing. And right. and, that, and the whole goal behind this is to get people to call me. You know, they sure. want, I want them to call me. So back to my point, you could go to like, again, a little town in Montana and you could start doing some tours of homes and then start doing some things around the town. And if you and probably knowing what you know now, it might not take four months for you to get that first call. You might well, get that first call much quicker at this point because you've learned how to do it. I don't think it would because, it, and, and I would have a different story, you know, so my story sure. here is I've lived here for 10 years, you know, or 12 years. So yeah. I know the area, I know what, what the best places are to go. I know blah, 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 you know, but if I went to a new area, if you just dropped me, like you said, in Montana and you said, here you go, here, you know, you, you got a real estate license, but that's it. You know, that's all you got. Well, then I would, I would show people what it's like for me live move into a new town that's what every video i would do i would be like okay we're, i'm we're at uh buffalo bill's restaurant in montana and we're fixing to go in here and have some lunch i've never been here before so let's go in and check it out and i'll tell you what i think you know and then i would do a tour of the restaurant i might talk to the owner or the chef or whatever um you know and then what you'll find is when you are consistent with this and you start doing stuff wherever you're at in your in in your town, P 
people will start <laughs> calling you out, you know, because like uh, we we were at a restaurant that had just had a re a makeover because uh, Hurricane Sally pretty much destroyed the place, so they redid everything. Well, the and I'll be honest with you, the restaurant used to suck. I mean, it was horrible. So now they've redone everything. They got an executive chef. Their their food is phenomenal, and it it's a place called Zeke's. And so the executive chef actually called us and he said, hey, you keep doing all these best places to go on a date and best places for seafood, but you're not including Zeke's. And I was like, well, there's a reason because Zeke's was horrible. And he said, well, it's not now. He said, if you'll come do a video here, I'll give you a bunch of food and let you try it all. And we're like, I'm in. Okay. <laughs> so we go there and eat for free. And, and, and we had, I mean, it turned out to be one of the better videos we've ever had because the waiter was so good. We wanted to put him on the video because, and let him talk. And he told, he sold the restaurant. I mean, right there, he was just set, saying how great everything was and telling us how everything's made. And we're like, wow, this guy's, I mean, to be a, 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 a waiter, he was extremely knowledgeable. And so we just put him on the video and it turned out to be a great video. So that's awesome. So I have a question to follow up on kind of Jeff's if you're moving to a new city. So if you move to a you're in a you're in a small vacation town, as you mentioned, right? So if you were going to move to that new city, and maybe it's a big city, right? Whether Bozeman, Montana, whatever, would you start a channel? And this is for everybody, because a lot of people on here are in bigger cities. Would you start a channel on uh, you know, most of the time, if you live on the South side, you're going to sell more on the South side than you do the North side of a big town, right? You know, if you live on the East side, you're going to sell more on the East side. Cause that's just where you, where you live. Obviously we sell real estate all over, you know, the, the city, but would you focus your videos more on the side in which you really work and, and, um, and know the best or would you just start learning the whole city you know if it's a 45 minute radius all around the town i would just start learning the new city and that and i would do videos saying that i would say you know i, I tried to go to so and so today and it took me it, it, the ma google map says it's only 15 minutes to get there but with the traffic at four o'clock in the afternoon it took me an hour and a half so steer clear, you know, I, I mean, so I, would, I would let people know that, you know, and then say, if you're going to live here and you buy a house here, because it was so many big cities, you know, you take like, um, you take like Atlanta, Georgia, for instance, you know, yeah. nobody wants to live in the center of Atlanta because it's so hard to get around unless you work in the center of Atlanta, yeah. you know, so if you work in the center of Atlanta, then yeah, if you could walk to your work. Um, but a lot of people live in the little suburbs out around, you know, like Marietta and, and Dunwoody and things of that nature. So, you know, that's what I would do is those videos. And, and I would say, you know, how how long it takes you in the traffic. What's the best routes around it? We'll show you what it's like to live here and how to and how to negotiate all this horrible traffic that's in Atlanta. You know, because, well, that's what I'm saying. The people that will use Atlanta, so if they're doing the north side, you know, the Marietta and all that, they're probably not selling very much on the south side of Atlanta. I mean, it's a it's probably an hour drive for somebody that's on the north side to get to the south side, you know, for showing and all. So they probably don't show a, like sell a whole lot there. Obviously, we take customers wherever. So would you just go to all the little towns on the on the north side? Or would you venture down and include your South Side towns too? Well, if I didn't want to sell there, I wouldn't. I wouldn't video there. You know, I yeah. I wouldn't even include it if I didn't want to sell there. Um, yeah. You know, I would I would only video the places that I wanted to actually sell and and have people relocate to. I yeah. mean, because like with us, um, you know, there's a little town close to us that's like 45 minute drive is is Robertsdale, and it's a nice little area. You know, it's out in the country, but it's a very low price point, you know, so we just, I, honestly, at this point, I just don't want to fool with it. I mean, I, I don't want to, because I'm going to tell you something that, and you all know this as realtors, but that million dollar customer is a whole lot different than that $200,000 customer. I mean, there's a big, huge difference. I mean, a huge difference because that $200,000 customer will have you run all over hell and half of Georgia and then they still won't buy anything or they may not can even they may be lying to you about whether they can buy anything, but that million dollar customer will look at one house and make an offer and that's it, you know, 
I mean, not every time, but you know, for the most part, they're completely sure. different customers. Yeah. So it, I guess it just depends on what your target is, you know, yeah. who you want to sell to. Um, and the other thing, you know, Tim and I talked about this the other day, we had uh, just a meeting with him and I, we were talking about some of this stuff and naming your channel is so important. Because a lot of people think, well, I'm a realtor, so I need to get my name out there. I need to get, you know, my brand out there. Well, okay. But if somebody's moving to your town, <clears throat> you know, let's say your name is Angie Smith and you live in Atlanta, Georgia, and people, somebody's looking for houses in Atlanta, Georgia, do you think they're going to do a search for Angie Smith? They don't know you. So no, no they're not no. going to do a search for you. Good but now they may do a search for what is it like to live in Atlanta, Georgia? And if they do that, then you want to have your channel named to something that will pop up in that search. So that's the reason, you know, we went with Orange Beach, Alabama living is because when people type into Google or, or to YouTube and they say, what's it like to live in Orange Beach, Alabama? Well, then our videos are going to pop up. You know, our channel is going to show up. So that's what you want to do is make yourself searchable. Every single thing you do, you want to make yourself searchable and, and have all your content be searchable. That's awesome. I love how people are calling you. Zeke's called you. Andy, get over here. You got to do a video on our restaurant. We'll, yeah. we'll give you the food. I mean, that's like, I mean, again, here's what this becomes over time. You know, it's like they start reaching out to you, like do a video on our place. You know, let's do, yeah. do come over here. We'll give you some vouchers. We'll do a thing like, you know, like this is what this could become over time. You know, I mean, it's oh, awesome. yeah. Tim, Tim, you want to unmute yourself for, for just a second? Appreciate you being on here. Um, Cause I know you've, you've, you know, worked some with Andy. I know you're building the channel as well. Some different things. I mean, any thoughts or any, any questions for Andy or, or comments that you would want to give, you know, as you're looking at all this? Yeah, I, I was just going to add the, and, and Andy started to go there, but that, that one lady that asked the question about, you know, should you record videos in areas you don't work it, it's really about optimization, I think, when you get started. And, and Andy and I spent two hours last Friday just talking about and ultimately deciding that I need to rename my channel. You know, when we start a team, they they used to teach us don't 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 call yourself um, the Hollanden team, which I do. But my YouTube channel and my brand for the Hollanden team has always been Louisville Homes Fast. So my YouTube channel was Louisville Homes Fast. Well, one of the first things Andy said to me is people probably aren't searching for that. And while it's probably not hurting me, it's also not helping me. So we spent 10, 15 minutes looking at all the different variations of, of Louisville and um, ended up coming on coming up on a new phrase that that we're going to change the channel name to. So so the the lady that asked a question, um, you know, I would start with where do you work? Don't advertise where you don't want to work. You don't want to get you know leads for that area. It's just like buying Zillow leads in in the worst part of town. You don't want them. Um, so start with where you want to work, and and then find the best term, uh, the best name for your channel. And start there and then start recording all of your videos in that area first and then add these little sub areas around that channel. And those sub areas can become what YouTube calls a playlist. There's a playlist of just videos in, in that one area. That would be my suggestion. And Andy, is there anything you want to add to that? No, I mean, we because that's exactly what we do. I mean, so like if we do uh, videos in, say, Foley, Alabama, which is a, a lower price point than what you could buy on the beach. And they're mostly single family homes. So we do a lot of videos in the Foley area, but we have a, a section, a playlist on our channel that's called Foley Alabama Living. And so people can go there. If, if they're interested in Foley, they can see a playlist of probably you know 25 videos at this point where they can go in and learn everything about Foley Alabama. Then we have one, Gulf Shores, Alabama living. So they can go in and learn everything about Gulf Shores. Then we're about to expand into Daphne and Fairhope, which are bigger areas, but they're about an hour away from us, but we're we're just going to expand over there too. And the, the thing about it is, is even if we do get a lead from those areas that we don't necessarily want to go to, well, then that's a perfect opportunity for a referral. You know, so you could refer that business out. It's still your business. They contacted you. Um, the other thing that we found is 
when people are, we got, we have three right now that one's moving here from Missouri and they called us and said, well, as soon as I sell my home, I'm going to move there. And I've, I'm about ready to put it on the market. And we, we said, well, have you contacted an agent yet? No, we haven't. Okay, great. Well, let us set you up with one. And so then we get a referral for the, them selling their house in Missouri. And so, you know, I mean, it works very well on both ends. But the thing is, these people already trust you. So if you're re referring an agent out to them, then they in turn trust that agent because they think you trust that agent. So, you know, it it just it's a it's a domino effect when you start doing these videos. In terms of finding a name for the channel, I mean, you're just searching through YouTube. Is that what you guys are doing? Just searching different YouTube like like Tim for you, like Louisville, Louisville living. It's probably not available, but Louisville. I mean, is that how you do it? You're just searching around in YouTube to coming up with a name? No, I mean, you can do that, but that, that tool Andy reference called tube buddy okay. is, is what we use for that. Gotcha. Okay. And, and it doesn't matter if somebody has a uh, Louisville living, I can still call my channel Louisville living. Then I just got to put out more and better content than the channel that's currently with that name. And I will pass them up. Gotcha. So there can be multiple channels. And one other quick thing I want to mention too, you know, Andy is in a resort area and a retirement area. So he's used the, the phrase multiple times. So you're thinking about moving to, for those of you that aren't in a heavy relocation city, you could say, so you're thinking about buying or selling a home in Louisville, Kentucky. So that's what we do instead of, so you're thinking about moving to, I don't want to alienate the local movers from one part of the city to the next. So that that kind of that just that little tweak of the nomenclature there will will accomplish that. And if anybody's thinking about that, you know, Atlanta, Dallas, Houston, you know, all these big cities, you can do that because there are a lot of people relocating, you know, from California to Nashville or California to Dallas or what have you. So that's just another way to address the entire market and not alienate anybody. But but it works perfectly in, in a city where this, you know, Gulf Shores, Alabama, Orange Beach, Alabama, it's a second home market. It's a retirement market. It's a touristy market. So, um, and, and there's yeah. huge value that all those tourists are, are getting, you know, best places to eat. So he's accommodating them. And, and I, I'll be honest, I originally thought, man, that's not very smart. You know, those people aren't going to buy houses, but anybody that's vacationed somewhere over and over and over, they're second home buyers eventually. I, I'm the perfect victim of that. <laughs> Or example of that you know i've owned in gulf shores and orange beach since 2001 and you know my vacation there three or four times before that so it's a cool little market that's cool andy i think you know and you mentioned i think like anything you get better the more and more you do it no matter what it is all of us in this business the more consistent you are and and the the easier it gets the more comfortable you get whether it's going on a listing appointment whether it's you know what the first listing appointment we all went on, it was like, oh my goodness, like you walk in the door, your your knees are trembling. Like, you know, you, you don't know what you're doing. And, but again, the next one's a little bit better. And then after you've done 10, 20, I'm like, you can do them in your sleep. Like, here's what happens. And I think it's the same thing with this. You had mentioned like your first couple of videos. I mean, again, it's like, uh, 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 you know, just like it's, it's hard, you know, whatever. But I think by consistently 200 and some videos now, it's like you enjoy doing, you look forward to it is yeah. what it's done for you, you know? Yeah. Absolutely, because you know the results. I mean, you you know that if you put this video in there, you're going to get in front of, just just say that one video. I mean, we have like our best seafood video. I mean, we call people out to, and basically say, if you want to move here, then, you know, we're just going to show you what it's like to live at the beach. But if you do want to move here to call us or, you know, email us, set up a Zoom call, whatever the case may be. And then, but that video has gotten 18,000 views. Now you think about that. You, you get that one video got put in front of 18,000 people for free, you know? So it's not like, you know, YouTube's not charging for you to do this. I mean, it, it is absolutely right. free. And the other thing is like one of our, um, you know, cause I'm a numbers guy. So, I mean, it's like, when you think about this, this is crazy right here. We we have gotten so far just in th this is just in the last 28 days. So in the last 28 days, we've had 74,200 impressions. That means our videos have been put in front of 74,200 people in the last 28 days. What would you have to pay Facebook or Instagram or Google or anybody to, to do that for you? 
then what would you have to pay them to, in order to get in front of that many people? I mean, yeah, I don't th think you could afford it. I mean, it, it's astronomical. Yeah. So, and this thing just sits there and churns for you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They're constantly checking it out. I mean, the power of the, the leverage power of that is huge. You know, yeah, I mean, money wise, you know, time wise, I mean, you, you can't even come close to comparing it to anything else as far as the leverage there. Well, that and that's the back. one thing it gives you back. You know, everybody says, well, it takes so much time to do it. It it does. And and, and at the beginning, but now it, it frees you up, you know. So, I mean, because you can actually set these out, unlike TikTok or unlike Instagram, where you can't set the videos up to be to go out at a certain time or a certain day. I have videos all, all the way through the end of January already scheduled to go out. So and I and they're in place. They're already edited. They're already everything's done to them. Every other day, I got a video hitting from now to the end of January. So now I have a little time to do some other training or some other stuff that I want to do or whatever. Um, and then in the meantime, when I start seeing that time come up to to the, to do those videos, or if I'm showing property to a, another customer, I'll go out and make a video. If we get a listing, we'll get a video. And we'll pull it. We'll put it in there. And replace like a restaurant tour and move it to the end and then put our listing video because you want that to come up first. Yeah. So, but you can schedule these things out to where it's just automatic and then you don't have to, you don't have to worry about it. So Time for a nap. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> I'm, I'm to go shopping. Buy, Absolutely. Buy, some, buy some Christmas presents. There, so. <laughs> all that cool money he's making up with all those sales, huh? <laughs> well, I mean, Andy, Andy, when you mentioned down there, you again, it took you this, you know, the four months, the first one, seven months, the first closing, but then, you know, five million, you know, over 12 months, whatever. But now five million in the pipeline to close the first part of the year. Right. I mean, like, you know, your 2024 is set oh. to just explode. You know, I mean, in such a good way. And and you could, yeah, again, you could start referring some of that out. If you don't want to take yourself, you could bring on some other agents. You've got leads for them. You got business for them. You could build teams. Like this could go to wherever you want to take it. Again, you don't have to build it that big, but do something consistently with video. We've been talking video for two years now. Mm -hmm. And and I would yeah. tell you, for all of you guys, if you haven't done it yet, like just get started and, and yeah. just get doing it. I mean, Tim has mentioned, and I believe this to be true as well. If you're not doing video, Within the next couple two three years, you're gonna you're gonna be obsolete. You're gonna be like because it is the direction people are going, and all the people now getting their licenses. I mean, you know, not, this is NARSTAT. What is it, like eighty seven percent something like that of people writing contracts over the next five years don't have their licenses yet. There's gonna be a lot of people getting in the business, you know. And what are these people doing? What are these young people doing? They're working from their phones. They're doing everything. They're already doing TikTok videos and all this other stuff. This is gonna be a breeze for them in in a different way. They still have to learn the business, but again, they're going to be ahead of the game and we can all be there. Every one of us, you know, from the guy that's been around, you know, 61 years old doing this 21 years, I could get a YouTube channel going and get this thing up and running just as much as, as anybody else on here, you know? Um, Jeff, I think Sanan, Sanan, did you have a question Were you raising your hand? I had actually a statement, you know, last time, you know, we talked about the book perspective, you know, passive perspective. And exactly, you know, what is in that book, Andy was talking about it. Andy, thank you so much. Almost identical, really. I was, you know, uh, doing a, a audible one. And what he was talking about, that's what the book is talking about. Even, you know, you, you take time to make time. That's a great statement, you know. Yeah. But I, they, they took four months, you know, uh, to, to, to have first uh, call. And they had five or six months, you know, to have first interaction. So I think, you know, that what we talked about to begin with, like you, you can't give up after month one or two, right? Yes. And yes. that's really in anything that we're doing, whether you decide to buy Zillow leads or you decide to go, uh, you know, farming and neighborhood, whatever you decide to do, you know, it's the consistency and don't give up. Don't give up because, you know, you could be three months in. Imagine had he given up. I mean, $10 million in the last 15 months worth of business, he they wouldn't have if he had given up after month three because he just was like frustrated and this doesn't work. So we're right at the top of the hour. Um, Any last questions, guys? I know we've kind of take the whole taken the whole thing here. We tried to answer the questions along the way in the chat. Appreciate everybody participating. Uh, any any 
any questions or comments before we're done? Great stuff, Andy. Appreciate it. Yeah, so. Thank you. We're all good. Cool, cool. So, guys, the recording of this, um, again, it's recorded. We'll have this uploaded into our Freedom Team YouTube channel, uh, as well as the Freedom Team Workplace Group. If you're part of EXP, you can go to the Workplace Group. If you're not, you can go to our uh, EXP Freedom Team. That's the YouTube channel. Um, that This recording and all the other recordings that we've done, they're all on there. There's a playlist on, you know, to get more transactions. We got over 100 of them on there. These are awesome every week, um, just loaded with value. So, um appreciate everybody being on here andy thank you so much just great stuff and congratulations on all the stuff yeah. you've been able to do oh, thanks. it really is inspiring i mean it's just you know like wow any of us could do this at whatever level we want to do it that consistency and what it could lead to it's just powerful so um appreciate it so kathy thank okay. you yeah thanks everybody okay we'll thank see you guys uh later this week thank call you. us if you need us we're here to help okay take care thanks again andy thank you Bye.